in many ways it was the mystery of the Sphinx that really broke everything open, it brought everything to the public attention. Now, what we're talking about for the people that are uninformed is the idea that some of the structures in ancient Egypt are far older than conventional wisdom or conventional modern day archaeology, modern day Egyptologists. They would like us to believe that all of this spawned from a very specific time period. Dynastic Egypt as we know it, going back to about 3000 BC, was really a legacy of what I call now an earlier cycle of civilization. As a geologist with a geological eye, this was not weathered by wind and sand. This was not desert erosion and weathering that I saw on the Sphinx, the body of the Sphinx, which is very difficult to tell because it's been heavily repaired and reworked, but particularly on the walls of what are known as the Sphinx enclosure. The Sphinx enclosure is important because it preserves a lot of the details. And if you haven't, if the audience has not been to Egypt, they should realize that when they carved the Sphinx, it's all solid bedrock, only the head initially was above the ground surface. You carve, they carved down into the rock to free up the body, what I call the core body of the Sphinx. For centuries, the Great Sphinx of Giza has stood as a silent guardian of Egypt's Giza Plateau, watching over the pyramids and the Nile. Its lion's body and human head have inspired myths, legends, and scholarly debate. But beneath its imposing form lies a deeper enigma. What secrets does the Sphinx hold? And who were the architects behind its creation? The rediscovery of the Sphinx happened long after its original construction. For much of its history, it was almost entirely buried under sand, with only its head visible. In 1817, Italian explorer Captain Giovanni Battista Caviglia led an early excavation, clearing some of the sand to reveal more of the body. Yet, there were no signs of entrances or hidden chambers. The major breakthrough came in the 1920s and 1930s, when French Egyptologist Émile Barres conducted a more systematic excavation, fully exposing the Sphinx's body. Evidence of subterranean passages led to speculation about what lay beneath this ancient monument. Could this be the legendary Hall of Records, a hidden repository of ancient knowledge? In the 1970s and 1980s, modern technology like ground-penetrating radar and seismographs was used by archaeologists such as Dr. Mark Lehner and John Anthony West. Their findings revealed anomalies, hollow spaces beneath the Sphinx, raising new questions. What were these voids for? Were they ritual chambers, tombs, or something more? These discoveries have sparked the imagination of both scholars and the public. Many speculate about ancient knowledge hidden within these tunnels and chambers, which remain largely unexplored. The idea of the Hall of Records, a fabled repository of wisdom from a pre-dynastic civilization, persists, though no solid evidence has confirmed its existence. As for the dimensions of these hidden spaces, some tunnels extend nearly 30 meters, with chambers reaching heights of 5 meters. The complexity and scale of these cavities astonish researchers, as their construction would have required precise engineering to avoid damaging the Sphinx above. Could a civilization over 4,000 years ago really have achieved this with primitive tools? One particularly mysterious feature is a metal hatch discovered on the Sphinx's head during a 20th century restoration. While some believe it's a modern addition for maintenance, others suggest more fantastical possibilities. Was this hatch a secret entry to hidden chambers? Could it be a relic of a lost technology designed by the builders for some unknown purpose? The question remains, who built the Sphinx? And how did they achieve such a perfect blend of form and function? The Sphinx is an impressive 240 feet long, 66 feet high, and 62 feet wide. Carved from a single mass of limestone bedrock, its weight is estimated at 200 tons. Its dimensions are comparable to a modern football field, and its height rivals a six-story building. 
Given the rudimentary copper tools available to the ancient Egyptians, this achievement seems almost impossible. While scholars attribute the construction of the Sphinx to Pharaoh Khafre around 2500 BCE, some researchers believe it may be much older. Evidence of water erosion suggests the Sphinx may have been exposed to heavy rainfall centuries ago, dating it to as early as 10,000 BCE. This theory challenges conventional timelines, suggesting the Sphinx was built by an even older, lost civilization. Could the Sphinx have been constructed by a forgotten culture, equipped with knowledge and technology far beyond what we attribute to the Egyptians? The discovery of hidden chambers beneath the monument only adds to this speculation. Were these spaces used to store ancient texts, or perhaps to honor deities through ritualistic practices? Yet, as we uncover more about the Sphinx, the techniques used to build it remain just as mysterious. How did these ancient builders move and shape the enormous stone blocks? Theories abound about the construction methods. It is believed that tens of thousands of laborers worked together, using wooden sledges and water-lubricated sand to transport massive stones across the desert. While modern experiments have shown this method is possible, some argue that a lost technology or unknown knowledge must have been involved. More speculative theories propose that the builders might have used advanced tools or sound resonance to manipulate the stone. The deeper we dig into the mysteries of the Sphinx, the more questions we uncover. But one thing is certain. As we continue to explore the hidden chambers beneath the Sphinx, the story of its creation grows ever more fascinating. History, it seems, is never truly set in stone. New discoveries and secrets lie waiting to be uncovered. Perhaps the greatest mystery of all is not what the Sphinx reveals, but what it continues to keep hidden. In the shadow of the Sphinx, we are left wondering, who built this ancient monument and why? How did they achieve such precision, and what was the true purpose of the Sphinx and its surrounding megastructures? The most common theory is that the Sphinx was commissioned by Pharaoh Khafre, who also built the second largest pyramid on the Giza Plateau. But some evidence calls this theory into question. Water erosion patterns on the Sphinx's body suggest it could be far older, possibly dating back to 10,000 BCE, when Egypt experienced heavier rainfall. If this is true, it would mean the Sphinx predates the Egyptian civilization by thousands of years suggesting the existence of a forgotten culture. Could this lost civilization have been responsible for building the Sphinx? And if so, why are there no other traces of their presence? These questions fuel conspiracy theories that continue to captivate the imagination. One theory proposes that the Sphinx was built not as a tomb, but as an astronomical observatory. Its alignment with the constellation Leo during the vernal equinox suggests a connection to the stars, possibly serving as a marker of time or even a communication device with other worlds. Another theory suggests that the Sphinx and pyramids were part of an ancient energy system. Some believe the pyramids were energy generators, with the Sphinx acting as a control mechanism. The alignment of these structures with the Earth's magnetic field combined with their proximity to the Nile, supports this idea. Though no concrete evidence backs this claim, it remains a compelling alternative explanation for their purpose. But the mysteries don't stop there. What other secrets might be hidden beneath the Sphinx? Beneath the Sphinx, unexplored chambers continue to spark speculation. Could these be the fabled Hall of Records? According to legend, this hidden vault contains the lost wisdom of an ancient civilization, possibly Atlantis. Though no one has conclusively discovered it, the search for the Hall of Records continues to intrigue explorers. And then, there are those who believe the Sphinx's builders had help, from beyond this world. Extraterrestrial theories surrounding the Sphinx have persisted for decades. Some claim that the precision and scale of its construction are too advanced for the period, suggesting ancient Egyptians had assistance from extraterrestrial visitors. While this remains in the realm of science fiction, it highlights the fascination the Sphinx holds over the human imagination. Yet, even without the intervention of alien hands, 
the Sphinx and its surrounding pyramids are marvels of engineering. As we stand before the Sphinx, we are left with more questions than answers. What was its true purpose? Who were its builders? And why does it continue to mystify us after thousands of years? And so, the Great Sphinx of Giza remains, watching over the desert, guarding secrets that may never be fully understood. What lies beneath its pores, in hidden chambers, or in the past still waiting to be uncovered? Only time, and perhaps future discoveries, will reveal the answers. Until then, the Sphinx will keep its secrets, waiting patiently for the day when we are ready to understand what it truly has to tell us. There's something called the Osiris Shaft, which is located directly under the causeway between the Sphinx and the Second Pyramid. It goes about 100 feet underground. It's carved out of the limestone bedrock. It's the creepiest place I've ever been in my life. It's disturbing. So it's three different shafts and you go down and here's where it gets, this is the crazy part. When you get to the third level, which is completely dark and freaky, there was a side tunnel. Zahi Awas himself, there was a documentary, went down there and he showed, he's standing in front of this tunnel that went sideways and he says, it's yet to be explored and we, I, I don't know what's down there, but Joe, they've since sealed it up. It's like cinder blocks, they sealed it up. What? Yes! There are things that have gone underground in Egypt that for whatever reason, Joe, is just off limits to the public. Beneath the Giza Plateau, near the Great Sphinx and Pyramids, lies a mysterious structure that may reshape our understanding of ancient Egypt. Known as the Osiris Shaft, this subterranean complex challenges conventional timelines. Could it predate the pyramids? And what was its true purpose? Recent discoveries and a groundbreaking dating method have led Egyptologists to rethink what they thought they knew about this ancient civilization. The Osiris Shaft descends 35 meters into the bedrock beneath the causeway leading to the Sphinx. It comprises multiple levels, with the lowest chamber housing a granite sarcophagus surrounded by water. This chamber is sometimes referred to as the Tomb of Osiris. But what exactly was this structure intended for? Its purpose remains shrouded in mystery, with no clear answers in sight. One of the most intriguing aspects of the Osiris shaft is the unusual material used in one of the sarcophagi. Egyptologists discovered a stone unlike anything previously found in Egypt. How did it end up here, deep in the bedrock? Even stranger, the structure itself seems to have been designed without easy access in mind. There are no steps or ladders leading down to its depths. The ones installed now were placed there by modern archaeologists, suggesting that the ancient builders had no intention of facilitating frequent visits. The logistics of moving the massive sarcophagi, some weighing up to 40 tons, further deepen the mystery. How were they lowered with such precision into the shaft, which itself was not designed for easy entry or exit? The precision required to lower these gigantic objects without error suggests a technological ability that we do not fully understand. One sarcophagus found on the second level was particularly remarkable. It was covered in a thin film of bitumen, with a metallic coating beneath it. This metal, containing elements like lead and zinc, is puzzling. Why use a metallic coating inside a sarcophagus? Lead, in particular, raises questions, as it is known today for its use in radiation shielding. Could the ancient Egyptians have been aware of this? Moreover, measurements showed unusually high levels of gamma radiation inside the sarcophagus, further hinting at a function beyond burial. The method used to date one of these sarcophagi, called optical thermoluminescence, measures the last time the stone was exposed to light. The results suggested a date as far back as 3350 BCE, centuries before the accepted construction dates of the pyramids. This implies that the Osiris shaft could predate the pyramids and the earliest dynasties of Egypt. What's even more curious is the material of one sarcophagus, dacite, an igneous rock not found anywhere in Egypt. In fact, after consulting with geologists, 
it was confirmed that there are no significant dacite deposits in Africa large enough to produce a sarcophagus of this size. This means the stone was transported from outside the continent, perhaps from Europe or the Black Sea. The logistics of transporting a 40-ton block of stone across seas and deserts remains a mystery. Why didn't the builders use locally sourced granite or basalt, which would have been far easier to acquire? This discovery challenges long-standing views on ancient Egypt's chronology. The dating method used reveals a time well before the pyramids, offering a glimpse into a distant past. Could the Osiris shaft represent the work of a forgotten civilization, one whose achievements have been lost to time? As we explore the depths of the shaft, more questions emerge. Was the shaft's design deliberate, meant to preserve the dead using unknown methods? Could the high radiation levels within the sarcophagi have played a role in ancient preservation techniques? The builders of this structure may have known things we have yet to uncover. As archaeologists delve deeper into the Osiris shaft, they challenge established notions of ancient Egypt. On the third and deepest level, a stone island surrounded by water holds yet another granite sarcophagus. This time, the sarcophagus is made of granite, a material more common in Egyptian structures. However, its location deep underground and surrounded by water raises further questions. This sarcophagus dates to around 2370 BCE, placing it in the Old or Middle Kingdom. Interestingly, the design of the third level seems to be a later addition to the shaft, suggesting the site may have been used and modified over centuries. If true, this means the Osiris shaft was considered important long before the time of the pyramids. One of the most intriguing features of the third level is the water system. A meticulously shaped canal surrounds the chamber, and the water level appears to be maintained at a precise depth. How did the builders engineer such a system over 100 feet underground? The bedrock in this area is solid, making natural water leaks unlikely. This suggests that the builders tapped into a hidden water source, possibly through an underground channel or spring. At the Osirayan, another ancient Egyptian site, similar subterranean water channels have been discovered, indicating that the ancient builders had advanced knowledge of hydro-engineering. Water was often seen as a source of life and regeneration, and its presence in the Osiris shaft may have had symbolic significance in ancient rituals related to death and rebirth. This brings us to the connection between the shaft and Osiris, the Egyptian god of the dead and the underworld. According to myth, Osiris was resurrected in a sarcophagus placed on an island surrounded by water. The third level of the shaft closely mirrors this imagery. Could the builders have been trying to replicate the tomb of Osiris? Or was this part of a deeper religious practice? Oddly, the sarcophagi found in the Osiris shaft are devoid of inscriptions, which is unusual for ancient Egyptian tombs. This absence of hieroglyphs has led some scholars to suggest that these sarcophagi were not intended for traditional burials, but served a different, perhaps secretive, purpose. Adding to the mystery, researchers detected significant levels of radiation inside the sarcophagi. Combined with the lead coating found on the second level, this suggests that the sarcophagi might have had an advanced preservative function, something we do not yet fully understand. If the ancient Egyptians had knowledge of radiation's effects on preservation, it would represent a technological leap far beyond what we currently attribute to their civilization. Beyond the physical mysteries, the Osiris shaft raises important questions about the origins of Egyptian civilization. The dating of the second-level sarcophagus to as early as 3350 BCE points to a pre-dynastic origin, making the shaft one of the oldest structures in Egypt. As we continue to investigate the Osiris shaft, the possibility of discovering hidden chambers, artifacts or tunnels remains high. The Osiris shaft is rewriting our understanding of ancient Egypt and perhaps even pointing to a forgotten chapter in human history. If you enjoyed this video, then prepare to embark on an extraordinary journey. 
our next adventure takes us to the heart of Egypt, where we'll unravel the mystery surrounding an ancient pharaoh shrouded in legend. This extraordinary ruler was said to be half-human, reigning for an astonishing 16,000 years, a feat that defies the boundaries of modern science. It's a story filled with intrigue and enigma, one that's bound to leave you questioning the very limits of our understanding. Thoth talks in the Emerald Tablets about being able to go into these halls of Amenti where he had rejuvenation chambers, which is what I believe is the Serapium in Saqqara. And he would go into these gigantic stone boxes and he would then uh, transfer his consciousness from his body into another body. And he would leave the, the, the body that he left inside of one of those gigantic boxes, one of those giant, gigantic diorite stone boxes for a hundred years while it recharged itself and rejuvenated, while he said he walks amongst men but unlike a man. And he would do this for eons. He would transfer from body to body, not bodies he stole, bodies he created that he did created himself through probably some of the advanced form of stem cell technology. And he would walk amongst men, but unlike a man. And he was known all around the planet. And it's an incredible tablet that talks about the reigns of kings. Yeah. Some kings ruled for 28,800 years, 14,000 years. I mean, 20,000, if the numbers are insane. These and are not Egyptian? This, this is this is no not Egyptian. This is these are Anunnaki. 